What's up everyone, Bradley Jack Design here with another design tutorial. And in this tutorial, what I'm gonna show you is how to use the selective adjustment layer. So there's plenty of adjustment layers that you've used before, probably levels or curves or hue and saturation. This one I'm gonna show you is called selective color. It's one that I started using more recently and I think it's helpful if you want to add sort of a pop of color or make things a little bit more vibrant um, on a more exact scale. So I have here the, you know, just a color chart, a color spectrum of, you know, all the colors that you would be using. Um, this is mainly going to work in RGB because we can go past uh, colors of 100% um, in print. This wouldn't necessarily work, but if you're posting graphics online um, or editing photos, this is going to help out regardless. So uh, what we have here is all of the colors that you would use. We've got RGB and then we've got uh, CMY and then black in the background. So I'm going to show you what selective color does. Now a lot of this has to do with color theory. So I'm going to explain what these are going to do. Basically with selective color is you can choose all of these colors, red, yellow, green, cyan, and blue, magenta, white, neutral, and black. And what you can do is you can add or take away a percentage of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So what that means is we can adjust the colors um, on a more exact scale. So in the reds, we can add cyan or magenta or yellow or black. Um, you can get similar results with stuff like this by using vibrance. So what I like to use this for is adding color or adding saturation or vibrance to my designs or taking it away. So you can do that with you know the vibrance and the saturation with the hue and saturation layer, but it's affecting all of the colors on a global scale, where selective color is only gonna do it for the color selected. So the way this works has to do with color theory. And what I'm gonna show you is how that is going to work out. And I'm gonna show you in the color picker. So we can see here, so um, if we look at this scale, a little color theory here, if you add the opposite of what the color is, it's going to mute the color. And if you take it away, it's going to make it more vibrant or more saturated. So for instance, cyan is the opposite of red. It's on the opposite side of this color wheel here. So if I go to cyan here and I boost that up to 50, you can see the ending result here is muted and looks bad. This originally was at 10. If I take this and put it at zero, you can see the new result is more vibrant than before. So that's what the color picker is doing, or that's what the selective color is doing. So if I choose green, I can go in here, it says magenta. There's no magenta in this now. If I boost the magenta up, you can see it's muting the color, it's dulling it. But if I set it back to zero, we have our color, well, the original color we had, we have here with zero magenta is this bold vibrant green so that's what the color pickers or the selective colors going to let you do so in the reds here i can show you if i add cyan it's muting it if i take it away it's making it more vibrant and it's doing that on a percentage scale now i have relative selected right now so there's two selections relative and absolute if you do absolute it's going to have more drastic of a change because it's adding the absolute number percentage to that. So for instance, if I add 50% cyan, it's adding 50% cyan to it. So let me show you. So if I highlight this, it's a little confusing, but it's easy to understand. So right now we have cyan, we have 10% cyan in this color. So if I turn this selective color on and add 50% cyan with absolute selected, and if I go to the color picker, I now have, whoops, that's, that's not what I want. It's adding 50%. So hypothetically, it would be this same color here, but with 50% added. So 50% cyan would be 50, which is this color, which is what you know that color looks like. It's giving me a slightly different variation but it's adding in 50% more cyan. If you have relative selected, it's giving you 50% of the relative cyan in that color. So you can see if I turn this off, 
and select this. We go back here. We've got our 10% cyan. If I go to selective color and add 50% and select this color again, I have 16% cyan. So it added five to 6% cyan because it's adding 50% of what cyan exists in there. So to show you, I have this color wheel muted a little bit. So that's to add more color into the colors. So you see here, if I move this up and down with relative, it's not doing anything. If I go to the greens and try and add magenta, it's not doing anything because if I select this color, there's zero magenta. So it's not adding any, it's not adding any magenta relative to how much is already there. If I change this to absolute, it's changing the absolute value to that. So it's adding or taking away that much magenta. I use relative because most of the time, if you're working with an image, you're not working with full saturated, you know, 100% green with 0% magenta in it. It's just not realistic if you're using a photo. So let me go back to absolute and I can show you what happens if we change some values. So we'll go back to the reds. So what I like to do, and I'll show you some examples of how I use this on photos. So let's say we wanna add, if we add cyan to red, it mutes it. If we take it away, it makes it more bold. If we add magenta, you can see what it does. It makes it a little bit more red. Basically, if we take away magenta, it's turning yellow. So the less magenta we, the more magenta we take away, the more yellow the red is going to be. If we add yellow, you can see it's going to change. This is on absolute though. I really don't like absolute. So you can see relative magenta, the yellow changes. If I take away the yellow, it adds magenta. So basically you can see these two, if we take away one, because on the light spectrum, if you add yellow and uh, magenta, you're gonna get some red. So if we take away the yellow, we're left with magenta. We add the yellow back, we get red. We take away magenta, we get yellow. And it's all color theory. And then of course the black on here is going to make it darker or lighter. And I can do that on all of these colors. So if I go to cyan, if I add red, which is magenta and yellow, you can see it's muting the color. And if I clearly take away cyan, it's gonna make it white because we're adding in the opposite color and taking it away. And if I do absolute, you can see we now have red because we have no more cyan. We only have magenta and yellow. But if we boost this back up or take these down, you can see it changes the color. So how can we use this in real life? Um, so this applies to, you know, and this applies to all of them. So if I add yellow to blue, it mutes it. If I take it away, it makes it bolder. If we go to green and we add magenta and take it away, it makes it bolder. Same thing with yellow. If we take away cyan and magenta, it makes it bolder and we can add yellow to it or take it away as well. So it's a lot of color theory here. So how can we use this? So here I have just this image of this guy. So I like to use this to make skin tones brighter. Um, you can do that again, like I said, you can easily go into the vibrance and you know set this up to 100%. And you can see it's a lot more saturated, but everything's more saturated. So I like to do this so I can fine tune it. So we can go to adjustments, selective color. I can select the reds. For skin tones, I usually select red and yellow because it's an orangish hue. So if I take away cyan and I don't have absolute, you can see if I drag it all the way down, if I turn it on and off, it's just making his skin a little bit more vibrant. Same thing with the yellows. So the yellows, if we go back to our scale, is blue, um, which is you know mainly cyan. So if we take away cyan, maybe we take away some of the magenta. You can see with the magenta on skin tones, it's making it either more yellow or more purple, which we don't want purple skin, of course. But if we add yellow back to it, you know, it adds in a little bit more warmth. So you can see here, we basically saturated his face, but not the background. So then we can do the same thing for cyan. So if we boost the cyan up, we can do that. If we get rid of, what is cyan's opposite? Red, which is magenta and yellow. So if we get rid of magenta and we get rid of yellow, oh, I gotta turn this back on, of course. So if we put these back down to like normal sliders, so if we take away magenta and yellow, you can see the background is getting more vibrant. I can do the same thing with the blues, take away yellow, 
add in blue. Maybe we adjust the, the darkness here. And you can see just playing around with the knowledge of knowing that if you add or subtract the opposites, that's going to affect the color, you can have some nice effects. So, you know, this is the beginning. Really, we just, you know, we boosted the vibrancy of this a little bit, but we didn't overblow anything. Um, here's another example. So here's, you know, there's a lot of red, a lot of warmth in this. So we can either take away or add to it. So let's go to reds. And so the opposite of red is cyan. So if I take cyan and remove it, you can see it's making it a lot more red. It's bumping the reds up. Now this doesn't look great. You know, going all the way, it's a little blown out. So I might want to go to the cyans, move it down here. Let's see what happens if I move the magenta up or down. So you can see this is very yellow. It does not look good. But, you know, maybe I'll boost the magentas and then to compensate, boost the yellows as well. And maybe move the cyans down or up. Move the blacks around. It's so like this is like super vibrant. Like this is a great photo. You know, I'm sort of ruining it, but you can see how much more red or how redder this is. And, you know, we can use subtle details, too. So, like, that doesn't look too bad. Again, I use this to make, if I'm trying to make a design super colorful or really pull out some color in someone's skin. So, like, here we have this nice photo here. So, if I go to the adjustments, go to selective color, we have our reds again, and I can go to the yellows, too. But let's say reds. Let's take away the cyan. You can see what it does to the skin tone here. And actually, let me take this. And I will actually, let me mask this. And let's move this over here just a little bit. So now you can see here, this is where it's masked. So the, the right side here is not being affected. The left side's being affected. So right now, all we did was we took down the cyan, you know, 50%, which is adding a little vibrancy to the skin tones. We can add in magenta, add in yellow, having much more much warmer skin tones here than what we have in here um, again it depends on what feeling you want to give with whatever you're creating so i can take down the cyans add the cyans so normally what i'll do is like if this is a little too much i might go in the yellows and add some cyan back to get it back more to like for this instant a more brown color than this sort of vibrant orange then i can take away magenta or yellow and this is sort of back to where we were because we offset what we did with the red and since orange is red and yellow, that's the effect. Or, you know, we can go super bold, you know, and have a very orange face, but we don't want to do that. And you can do the same thing with, you know, the leaves up here. So if I go to green, so if we go back green, the opposite of green is magenta. So I can add magenta to mute the colors. So you can see it's, if I take it away, it makes these pop a ton adds a lot of color to it and you can add or subtract yellow if I take yellow away you can see they're turning more blue maybe I add a little bit of yellow and then the cyans I can play with to see what those do do a little bit they affect it a little bit and then we can move this dark the black up and down maybe we add some black to it but you can see the before and after so the after looks cool over here a lot of vibrancy in here now it doesn't look great up here. You can see in the, the flowers, it's a little little washed out, a little oversaturated, and you can always just mask that out with a selective color. But maybe we go in here, click on the magentas. Magenta green is the opposite of magenta. So I can go in the magentas and add in um, green, which if we go here, green is yellow and cyan. So we'll boost the yellow and cyan, and it's, well, it's really red at this point. So what I would do is I would use a, another adjustment layer of selective color of the reds, or I'd really just mask it out. But for this instance, you know, we can add cyan to it and it's getting a lot more detail back to it. Maybe we add a little bit of black, move the yellows around. And you can really, you know, change colors of things completely. So, you know, the reds, we added cyan and took away the yellows, which means we have purple now or magenta. So it's a fun way to play around with colors if that's what you want to do as well. Instead of using the hue and saturation, you can use this and fine tune it a lot better. When you're using the hue and saturation layer, I can show you. 
you know, if we wanted to change this to be purple, I can go to the reds and I can change the hue, but I, you know, I can't pinpoint the exact color. It's not changing these as well, where this changes them a lot better. You can just fine tune it a lot better with the selective color. So one more example. So this is, this is sort of an example of how I would use it in a design that I create. So we have adjustments, selective color. So you see we've got red and we've got some blue and cyan. So the reds, if I bump this down, and again, we're in relative, you can do absolute if you want. It's just gonna have more drastic changes. So I can boost the cyan down, boost the magenta up, boost the yellow up, and we've got like a much more vibrant red color. Um, that's using the natural color that's in the photo. Now I can do the same thing with the blues and the cyans. We just take away yellow, maybe add a little blue, add a little magenta. Do we want to change the darkness? Maybe we do that. Same thing with the cyans. We take away yellow, add in magenta, maybe take away some magenta, add in cyan. So you can see the before and after. We're adding in vibrancy and saturation at a more um, exact level with the selective color tool. So that's how I use it in a lot of design work I do um, or photos I take if you wanna warm up the face of someone. Um, it's an easy way to get rid of, you know, reds in someone's skin if someone's skin is too red. Um, like let's say, here, let's, let's go to the reds. Let's like, you know, let's make their skin. So their skin's too red. So let's say the camera came out like this. So you can go into selective color, go into the reds. You can add in some cyan, add in some yellow. Because when you're doing that, you're adding in green, which is, you know, sort of opposite of the red. It isn't on the um, primary colors, but we're adding in cyan essentially. But you can see we can take away the reds, or we can tone down the reds by adding the cyan. And then it was a little pink too, so we wanted to add in the yellow. And then we're back to that sort of original photo that we liked. So that's how I use the selective color. You know, we I, I go in here and I see what I want to change in a photo or design I'm using. So say it's the cyans, and then by using the knowledge of this color wheel here, I can add in colors to mute colors or take away colors to make colors more vibrant. And you can do the same thing with blacks as well and neutrals. So for instance, you know, if you have some whites that are too cyan, you can take away some cyans or you can add in magentas or add in yellows. And you can see what happens here. Um, and I have it on absolute right here. So you can see if I add in, let me go to relative. You can take away yellows, which is gonna make it more cyan magenta. Basically, whatever you take away, cyan, yellow, or magenta, if you take two of them away, it's gonna be whatever color's left over. So if we take away cyan and yellow, it's magenta. If we take away yellow and magenta, it's cyan, or more cyan color. And the same thing with the neutrals. Now the neutrals, I'm gonna show you this here. So the neutrals, you gotta be tricky with because it's everything has a neutral color to it. So if I add yellow, it's adding yellow to pretty much everything, not just gray. So, you know, this isn't a neutral color, but it is. there is neutral shades to it. But this is a way you can add, you know, some warmth to some photos as well. You know, if you add yellow and magenta, maybe take away a little bit of magenta, take away some cyan, add cyan. It's a fun thing to play around with to see what it will do to a photo or to a design you're making. And of course the blacks, if you change the blacks, now I gotta do absolute here. If you take away cyan from black, it's gonna be red. As you can see there, if you take away magenta, it's green. And we can't add any more because black is absolute, black has all of these colors to it. So you can't add to black, it's more taking away color. So if we take away yellow, it's turning it blue. And I can do relative and I can try and add colors to it. You can see it's not really doing much off on off on. I guess if you look faintly, it is adding a teeny bit of blue to it. But that is how I use the selective color. So it does take a lot of color theory or a little bit of color theory to understand how it works. So I hope that was helpful 
um, showing a little bit of the science behind how it works. Um, if you have any suggestions on any tutorials you want to see from me in the future, I always open to hear from you guys. Um, again, this selective color is something I've been using more recently that I think helps any photographer, any designer add a little bit of color or take color away from their designs or photos. So uh, comment below on what you think about this design or about this video, um, about the explanation of how to use this. If you're going to use this in the future, I'd love to know that. Other than that, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.